Hey, what's up, my people? John Middlecoff, new YouTube channel. What I need you to do, subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, share with your friends. Appreciate everyone that has. It's the podcast, three and out. You can listen wherever you listen to podcasts. Apple, Spotify, we got you covered. Also, thevolume.com, thevolume.com. We got merch right here, flex fit hat. Go to thevolume.com, get yourself a three and out hat. I think Purdy played too well in this game for him to get a lot of heat. But the talk tomorrow will be, well, you know, you settle for a field goal. Mahomes gets a touchdown. Do you think Purdy will get any heat at all? No, I think it's more on Kyle. I, I, you know, you're making 900 grand. I mean, Kyle's making 15 million. He's the star of the show. One thing I, if I wanted to criticize Kyle, the play caller, and I think you see it with Andy, when part of the thing with Kyle is his offense is his offense. Where Andy has adapted over the years, a million. Yeah, he yeah. plays one way with Alex. He plays another way with Mahomes. Yes, yes. He used to pass w- probably too much. Now he has no problem running the ball. He he realizes he's got that Belichick mindset of like I'll do whatever it takes. Where Kyle's offense is his offense, yeah, and yeah. one thing they do not do beside the play action rollout is just like a rollout, snap the ball to him and get Purdy on the move. One of Purdy's defining characteristics, which no one really knew when he first started playing, which is evident now is his mobility is pretty damn yes. good. Yeah. And Kyle doesn't ever get him on the move. What happened some multiple times? There was a play early in the game, a throwback to Kittle that was negated with a penalty. Get him moving. He's an instinctive player. But that's yeah. not Kyle's offense because he doesn't have – Kyle does not have a drop-back passing offense. It's all tied to the run. Yes. And even when he gets pass happy, it's still run fakes to the pass or a quick screen fake. That's part of Kyle's deal. And I wonder if he just adapts a little bit moving forward next year with Purdy because their team's still going to be really good. They'll probably be the betting favorite after the draft to win the NFC. But I do, I mean, you know, Andy only got there once with Philly and he lost it. He lost a lot of the championship games. And then next time he got back with Mahomes, he won it and the rest is history. Now he's winning it. Kyle's been there twice now and lost in this one, (laughs) the longest overtime in league history, I would imagine. And in both games, outplayed Mahomes for at least three quarters. I was playing out- winning football. Was play- no it's one question. thing if you get, it's one thing if you're the Denver Broncos playing that Seattle team, get your ass kicked. What are you going to do? You know, it's just like, damn, we were not, you, you have these type games. I don't know how he sleeps for a week because he, he's been around this long enough to know how hard it is to get back. Listen, I, I think they're going to stay maintained being pretty good, but how many opportunities do you get where your team comes out ready? They had just looked pretty shitty the last couple of playoff games out playing them, even in overtime, you drive first and score. If you could just somehow get a stop, maybe get them to miss a long field goal, and what happened? Mahomes makes a couple plays. Andy makes a couple great play calls. All of a sudden, they get a wide-open touchdown. It just ends. And I, I think one of the question marks, I would imagine in the Bay Area, that that where Kyle had to call the timeout with Wilkes, this is the thing. And we, we've been talking about it for a while with Spags and, and Andy. He doesn't have to worry about Spags getting a job. He's going yeah. nowhere. So he has full yeah. trust in a great coordinator where Kyle lost back-to-back coordinators who he knew he felt comfortable with. And now he had to go outside and clearly like Wilkes is solid. Like he was good tonight. Not, but this is not exactly the 2019 Kansas city. You know, does Kyle think he's great? No, but it, you know, you're kind of in no man's land with this guy as a defensive coordinator. He's not some great defensive coordinator. No. If they were all available, he's not a top 10 pick in the league. So th- th- that to me is one question mark with the 49ers moving forward is how much trust Kyle has in his defensive court. And there was a point this year where they lost three straight games. I thought he was going to get fired, Yeah, but they didn't really have anyone else on the staff. And then when you have to, how often does an offensive coach who's the head coach call a timeout because he doesn't like the look on defense after he gave up a blitz. It's, it's very, very rare. And even Romo's like, he probably did the right thing, but it's not like Andy doesn't even have to do that. And uh, I think, I don't know. Maybe they just they would have ran out of gas even if you know Bill Belichick was their defensive coordinator. Yeah, I I, I thought Romo brought up a good point in the second half. I thought they said, were good you know, tonight. I know they take a lot of shit, but I, I, I thought they were fine. I, I thought they were really good. I thought Romo had a couple of gems, and he kept saying this this Niner drive. He goes, this Kansas City defense, they've got to be tired. Now they're young, and young players usually, you know, San Francisco had multiple guys get dinged up, hit the ground. It's an older team, but I thought Romo pointed that out. You know, I had said this about Andy Reid. If I look at Bill Belichick's career, it is overwhelmingly tied to one player. I mean, they were bad in New England before Brady. They were bad after him. Weren't very good in Cleveland. 
I, you know, I'll say this. I, the We don't consider Bill Russell with 11 rings better than Jordan with six. I think Mahomes is the best quarterback I've ever seen. I think Andy Reid's the best coach I've ever seen. He's not tied. He Donovan McNabb was a B minus quarterback. He, he was always inaccurate. He was an athlete, not ideal size. You know, he's always he short hop stuff. He he was kind of like uh, he was a good quarterback. He was out of shape in the Super Bowl, Colin. I mean, yeah. he was throwing up in the Super Bowl. <laughs> I, I mean, I just feel like Andy, it, it, who always gave Belichick problems, even with second tier quarterbacks. I think Andy's a better coach than Belichick. First of all. When that when you go to overtime, we're all just I mean, Romo and Nance are like, oh, this is Andy Reid. This is this is this is almost unfair. I mean, Andy hides stuff. Um, so much of New England's success was tied to an offensive line coach. Um, I mean, if you go look uh, when Scott Pioli leaves in the last eight or nine drafts when Bill controlled him, he didn't draft well. He's toned, he's allergic to offense. Once he lost offensive people, Bill really regress badly. I think you look at Andy Reid's coaching tree, his ability to adapt, win with multiple quarterbacks, multiple coordinators. I think Andy's the best football coach since Bill Walsh. That's my take. You know, again, Bill Russell had some advantages. Um, you know, it was Red Arbach. It was there were fewer teams. And Bill, I, I'm not and in no way saying Bill, um, I mean, listen, he he helps find Dante Scarnecchi, he, you know, helped, he drafted Brady. I think, but I think Andy Reid, I mean, we think Shanahan is elite. We both do. Top three or four coach yeah. of the year. That game comes down to that last drive. I mean, you, you have to acknowledge that Andy's doing stuff. They're hiding stuff they haven't used. I don't know. I, I When I watch, when I watch Andy Reid's teams in big games, I mean, he's the best coach off a bye of all time. He's now very close to being the best big game coach ever. Uh, they win more close games, more more games they've trailed in the half. I'm not in any way discounting Mahomes' ability. But shit, that last drive in overtime, it is so clever. Um, I mean, how many third and twos and fourth and twos did they run a play and you're like, oh, they, I haven't seen that one this year. I don't know. Where do we classify Andy Reid? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's definitely, you know, Walsh is going to go down as probably the most famous coach of all time right there with Lombardi right when you when you close your eyes you say the NFL you'd go Walsh Lombardi and you said Belichick too you know Walsh won three Super Bowls people forget Seifert won two right uh so Andy now has three one thing that's not debatable with him and Bill because I I do think Bill has taken some un unfair criticism like we watched him make incredible moves in the biggest games from double passes to not calling the timeout against Pete Carroll to embarrassing Sean McVay, who granted was like 34 at the time, but still they, they, they scored three points in the Super Bowl. When their teams are not Super Bowl contenders, right? And Andy's proven it with, he was making the playoffs with Jeff Garcia. He had Alex Smith competing to win that division when Peyton Manning was in it. You remove Tom Brady, the team is horrendous, awful. And I would say if you just factor in the errors, eras, and you've talked about this, Belichick in an era where defense is physical is the cream of the crop, right? He was developing defensive game plans for Parcells to take out Walsh in Montana. Early on in Brady, he had those physical teams taking out Marshall Falk in the Super Bowl, some of the great game plans. But th- that league no longer exists. The right. league we're in now is Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Andy Reid. Offensive league, innovative. How to get first downs is just, if not more important than defense. And Andy's the best. It's not even close. And I think anyone that knows him, and, and I knew him before he had a Super Bowl, uh, I he's just an incredible human being. You know, that's one thing. People defend Belichick that have been around him because they had a lot of success around him. People defend Andy that have been around him before he won it because they liked him. Because what he, the way he treated people, the way he acted in the office, the way he was to coaches, look at his coaching tree. Like, if you factor that in, one thing Bill Walsh got a lot of credit for, right, was – Won Super Bowls, always pivoted off players, and found guys like, I don't know, Mike Holmgren, George Seifert, who then led it. They they had this, you know, kind of uh, opening with what came with coaches that became, ran the league. Bill, Bill was the opposite, right? Look at Andy's coaching tree. It's freaking incredible. And all I those would, guys swear by him. Yeah, Matt Nagy's considered a miss. In a time when Stafford, Rodgers, and Kirk Cousins were in their prime, he got... He got Mitch Trubisky to the playoffs twice. 
<laughs> Mr. Trubisky is one of the. I, I think Mr. Trubisky was like the worst contract in the league. He made eight million dollars, and he's not even. He's barely a third string quarterback. Matt Nagy's yeah. gonna be head coach in the NFL again. Like I, I, I promise you, he he will be. You know who likes him the most on the staff beside Andy Reid? Patrick Mahomes. Like I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm giving that guy some credit of understanding what's what can coach or not. Nobody. Bill Walsh would have struggled with Mr. Trubisky. How many games would Belichick have won with Mr. Trubisky? The guy the guy can't hit water if he's sitting on a boat in the middle of the ocean. So yeah. I listen I. I, I think Andy Reid, uh, the scary part is, Colin, he's just not done. Like, it, it, all this retirement talk, it, it, Andy's not a golfer. Well, he's not a fisher. The, <laughs> no, and also, to your point, they'll move off Chris Jones. They've got they've done a good job drafting Carl Loftus and some other players. They got some pass rush. So they'll move off Chris. Um, they'll probably try to get Kelsey to sign another deal. Um, but, I mean, they're not – I mean, they're, the smart teams in this league, I think, are – They'll pay a they'll pay a front five guy, Aaron Donald, Rams. They'll pay him, uh, Chris Jones. But the smart teams in this league this is what drives me crazy about Pittsburgh. You can't be spending your money on defense. Outside of a TJ Watt, you just got to go draft safeties and corners. And most of these guys, if you look at them, Kansas City, they're not drafting a corner. They'll occasionally, if it's a big need, they'll go early. But a lot of them are fourth, fifth, and sixth round draft picks. Same with running backs. So I just think I look at Andy and I think to myself. New England started to show signs of regression even after the Atlanta Super Bowl. It was very obvious they could not draft a receiver or a tight end after Gronk. You started seeing that at the end. Remember Brady on the bench screaming, get open. I don't know where Kansas City's organization has a whole draft, develop, communication, quarterback, defense, bags. I always felt you could really see the more power Bill got the worst the drafting got. It wasn't even an argument. I mean, like, Veach is hit. Like, he's like uh, Brad Holmes in Detroit. You go to the last three years, like six hits. In the late I, I rounds, too. It's not even just the first rounds. He's getting Pacheco's yeah. a seventh rounder. Watson, uh, the DB, I think, was a seventh rounder. So they're getting players all over the draft. Yeah, they don't really have – I mean, they really don't. They, they've got the uh, They've got the ability – to move off really popular, talented guys, which, you know, a lot of organizations don't, they can't, they just can't move off them. Uh, I, I, I think, I mean, if I, if I, I'm, I'm trying to think my next year's Super Bowl bubble, I thought this was, I honestly, I thought this was the year to get Kansas city. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it last really year did. was two and they've won two. 